Okay, let me. That started at the end. We'll go to the top. Right there. Okay. Great. Let's go ahead and get started then. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Doug Huderberg. Uh, I am uh, happy to uh, introduce Dr. Ron Delano, who has uh, Del his own practice, Delano Family Chiropractic in New Jersey. And he's also the inventor and uh, of the Servigard collar and the CEO of Servigard. And uh, really excited to have Ron join us to share uh, some of his cases, some of how, how the collar works. And then really for me, the exciting part is really what it's, you know, how he's integrated it into his practice and into his treatment plan and how it has really helped him grow his practice. So just a couple of things um, we will follow up after this uh, by email to share a PDF and a replay of the video. So, I mean, if you want to take notes, great, but don't worry about it because we will provide you, you know, with the materials afterwards. Uh, when I provide that, you already have my contact information probably, but I'll also make sure that you know how to get in touch with us, set up a meeting, uh, go about acquiring callers, anything like that we can help you with. Uh, so this is going to be a 30 minute presentation uh, with with 15 minutes of questions and answers at the end. So if you have a question, everybody's muted right now. We're not going to see your video either. But if you have a question, just go into the control bar, choose the chat option and type in a chat. Uh, send that to me or you can send it to the whole group if you want. I'll monitor those and I'll, I'll feed those questions to uh, Dr. Delano after the presentation. So. Without further ado, Dr. Lano, uh, let me hand over to you. Thanks, thank you for uh, being here today. It's my pleasure, Doug. Okay, let's look over uh, a few things first. Uh, the um, uh, the literature review, uh, because we need to know why this thing is so important. Why is this ServiGuard collar uh, so effective? Why is the Army interested in it? Why is Kessler Institute of Rehabilitation sponsoring uh, research projects regarding this collar? And why are we getting referrals from all over the country to treat patients with severe neck pain uh, when no other uh, therapies were working? So let's look at some of the literature review with regard to forward head posture and loss of neck, neck lordosis and see some of the reasons why uh, these clinical features are being so stubborn. So um, Doug, I wanna go to the next one. I'll get that, there you go. There you go. Okay, so determining the relationship between the cervical lordosis and neck complaints. Well, this paper, again, you guys can get copies of this uh, through Doug, but basically they took 277 patients, took lateral cervical x-rays of them and measured their necks and recorded who had neck pain and who did not. And it found that people who had uh, lost their normal forward curve in their neck had increasing amounts of neck pain to the point where, where your neck was straight up and down, which we commonly see with forward head posture, there was an 18 times more likelihood you would have neck pain. That's pretty big statistics. So if you don't have a good curve in your neck, you're, you're more likely, 18 times more likely to have neck pain. Uh, this next one is about, is forward head posture relevant to autonomic nervous system function and cervical sensory motor control? The answer to the question is absolutely yes. So people who have forward head posture have a high incidence of neck, shoulder, arm, and, uh, and symptoms going into the hands and fingertips. We have dozens of patients in our clinic with paresthesia in both extremities, hands, who completely reverse within 24 hours after putting the collar on. And some of them actually, the second they put it on, minutes later, it's gone. So forward head uh, posture has a very negative effect on the proper functioning of the autonomic nervous system uh, in terms of the symptoms that you can experience. This is another paper done by uh, uh, a group, a medical team, and they wanted to look at the correlation between the cervical lordosis or normal neck curve and cervical disc herniations in young patients with neck pain. And they found that if you look all the way to the left, that's a normal curve to your far left on a viewing. And then the three films to, your, to the right of that are varying degrees of loss of normal curve. 
And they found with those three uh, configurations, there's a high instance of neck herniation, a disc herniation, excuse me, and the neck pain. And that when you were able to return the person back to a lordosis, uh, not only did the neck pain go away, but the size, the compression of the disc joint increased back to normal. Remember, this is in younger patients. I believe the study was under 40 year olds. So interesting there that the neck curve is, uh, protects the discs and then the straightened neck or the reverse curve of the neck will actually cause disc herniations. Uh, this one here was very interesting. We stumbled upon this a few years ago and we were a little shocked about it, but it says that there's de decreased vertebral artery hemodynamics in patients with loss of cervical lordosis. So the vertebral artery, which goes through the transverse process of the vertebra, cervical spine, and feeds into the foramen magnum for the back part of the brain, that that the, the circumference of that artery, the vertebral artery, is diminished significantly. And so now you have a vascular and ischemic issue uh, with regard to the compression of the vertebral artery if the person has a straightened neck or a loss of neck lordosis. So the doctors in this audience, not only the chiropractors, physical therapists, medical doctors, um, surgeons, spine surgeons, know that the head posture is extremely important relative to the functioning of the vertebral artery, because that directly affects the cervical lordosis. It also uh, implies that we should try to do whatever neck fusions we do in a lordotic configuration. Okay, uh, we're doing uh, 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 clinical trials <clears throat> as we speak with Walter Reed Military Research Team in, co in conjunction with Kessler Institute of Rehabilitation, which is teamed up with Servigard Spinal Bracing Corps. It was supposed to begin in spring of 2020. Well, it just started in spring of 2021. So we're, we're ongoing with that one. We're excited about it because a lot of important people are learning about this, this uh, server guard collar. Okay, so how does this thing uh, work? How does this collar work to fix what's wrong? Well, let's take a look. When your head is forward of your shoulders, if you look at the x-rays we see before and after, uh, if, when the head is forward of the shoulders, if you can follow my cursor, you lose the neck curve. And we draw this line, this V-line. It measures basically the tip of the spinous process of C7. Vertically up, and then the horizontal distance to the back it should be between 60 and 70 millimeters. This person is way beneath that. Then on the right, we put the collar on the patient for a 10-week period, all the muscles and ligaments rehabilitated, uh, the ligaments remodeled, and the head position was now where it's supposed to be. Notice how big that distance is. It's in the six over 60 mill, uh, millimeter range. And the nerf, neck lordosis is nicely returned. So after the use of 10 weeks, no more headaches, neck pain, or right, I think it was the left shoulder pain. So um, this was done every day for 20 minutes for over six weeks. Uh, let's go. And here's a patient. She was the, the uh, uh, this was our alpha patient. She was the first one to use it. Uh, we, we moved off there too, too quickly. Doug, can you help me get back on the prior slide? There you go. All right, we'll move along. Uh, basically, what, the, what the, uh, the prior slide was showing was the, uh, the patient wearing the collar, and she wore that one for 10 weeks, and that remodeled her head, her head and neck complex. This is an instruction sheet we're looking at right here. We're showing the person wearing the collar, and we like you to start off in a reclined position. Why? Well, because most people, most people, there we go. Thank you, Doug. So eye above the teeth. We don't want to push orbit of the eye and we don't want to uh, hear. It's kind of lagging. Um, sorry about that. Can you hear me? Uh, I've lost. Uh,
Yes, I hear you, Doug, but not Dr. Delano. Okay, Dr. Delano, we've lost your audio somehow. I think your internet connection, something's going on with it. Uh, yeah, I, what what are you seeing? Yeah. So we're seeing the, uh, yeah, we've lost Dr. Delano's audio. Oh, you're he's muted, unmute, or I'm muted. There. Okay, now can you hear me? Yeah, somehow you got muted. I'm not sure how that happened, but you're back. Are well, we on the? Let's not worry about that. Yeah. Let's just move on. Okay, so there's the patient. Uh, you see the track over here that's moving the uh, uh, the server guard adjustment. This th this cheek pad here, we call that the push zone. It's pushing the head back over the shoulder, so the ear is lining up over the shoulder where it belongs. And in the back are fulcrum pads, which help build the cervical lordosis. So we're this simultaneously fix fixes the forward head posture and uh, the cervical curve while the patient, patient wears it for 20 minutes a day for a six week period. Next slide. Uh, we, we, we ask most patients to start in a reclined position. That's the image to the far left. And you see the patient reclining, the ear is over the shoulder. Why do we do this? Well, if you look at the way to the right, look at the starting posture where most people have. Their head is forward of their shoulders and it's slumped and that's the way they think they're normal is. So we have to make them aware of that is not normal. We need to get the head over the shoulders, as you see on the uh, three pictures on the right. And the best way to do that is to start them off reclined a little bit until the muscles and ligaments re-educate. Usually this takes about two to three weeks. But remember, it's a six, weeks, six week program, 20 minutes a day. Next. Okay, so here we have a female, 55 years of age. Look at the, look at the on the far left, straight neck, forward head posture. After 10 weeks of therapy, now look at the right, you see a nice curve in the neck and you see the head lined up over the shoulders. Next. Here's an older patient. They received, uh, this was a, totally a physical therapy approach in this one. There was no chiropractic care given. It was all physical therapy. The patient was prescribed a collar. This gentleman's in his uh, 75 years old at the time. There's a lot of DJD. If you look at the x-ray on the left with a starting point, straight neck, forward head posture, we put the collar on him on the right, just right next to him. You can see the collar with the screws and bolts through the x-ray and notice the head posture has improved. He wore this every day. I think he had it for four weeks and his pain was down about 20% and his head correction was significant as you can see in the far right. This, despite the fact that he had degenerative joint disease. Here's a 53-year-old female. Uh, this, part, this female is a surgeon. Uh, she, had, she was ha having trouble uh, doing uh, surgery in the OR because she had neck strain and lower back pain, oddly enough. We got her on, if you look at her x-ray in the far left, the one that has the earring on it, you see the DJD in the lower cervical spine. They're wearing down at the joints. Probably there's some disc herniations in there. Um, and then you look at the right, when we put the collar on her, look at the beautiful curve in her neck, which helps all, remedy all the things we've talked about so far. And notice the head posture. She's right over her shoulders. So she gives a nice testimonial in our corporate introductory uh, video if you want to catch her personal appearance on this. So if you look at her x-ray in the far right, this was after she did the treatment protocol and look at the nice curve in her neck. And a lot, of, a lot of research in the past thought you couldn't get this kind of a curve with someone who has arthritis in the lower part of the neck. Here's proof that you can do that. So this is an amazing finding. And it's what's turning heads all over the country in medical research centers. Next, uh, this one is the male 44. Look at the breakdown in the center of his neck on the far left, puts the collar on right next to him. You can see the nice curve in the neck. The head posture is improved, heads back over the shoulders. And then we, uh, six to eight weeks later, you look at him on the right and you see that's the permanent correction. Next. Uh, this is a 68 year female, former football player. Uh, I think he was a linebacker. Look at his neck on the far left. There's no disc in the middle of his neck. See four, three, four and five. Nothing. You go to the right, actually next to him, the collar's on. You see it moved his head back significantly. Plus it helped his neck curve, despite the arthritis. And the x-ray in the far right, five weeks later, you see his uh, head posture is permanently corrected in a positive way. 
and the neck curve is, is a little bit better. And this is a gentleman that uh, didn't receive any care. He's strictly a physical therapy patient. Next. Okay, we have a female, 31. Uh, this, this one, I remember her. She had, um, she had headaches, nausea, and whenever she would lay down and get up, uh, she would uh, be extremely dizzy. And after wearing the collar uh, for 10 weeks, you see the post on the far right. Look how nice her head posture improved. She, her neck lordosis only slightly improved, but all of her symptoms were gone. No, and she had uh, uh, no chiropractic care. This is all physical therapy. Next. Uh, this is a, a concussion patient. Very interesting. Um, hard hit on his head, had neck pain, headaches, dizziness, disorientation. Received chiropractic care. You see the uh, far left. His head posture is not that bad, but look at his curve. It's a little off, but a lot of symptoms. Um, we treated him. He felt better from his neck pain. This, this gentleman did get chiropractic care. Uh, he felt uh, no neck pain, headaches were gone, but his dizziness was still there. So the first time we put the collar on was about a year after that. And that's the x-ray the x-ray picture on the right. Um, you see the perfect curve in his neck and his head backs even more. As soon as he put it on, that equilibrium issue he was experiencing since he had the first concussion was gone within a minute. He didn't leave the office without purchasing a collar. And if you look at him in the far right corner, 831.19, six weeks later, that's his permanent correction. And he has no more, and this has been several years since then. We saw him last week for a wellness visit. No more neck pain, no more disorientation, no more dizziness. Pretty impressive case. Next. Okay, so um, this is a, a scoliotic patient. Headaches and neck pain were her chief complaint. Uh, if you look at her x-ray from the front, you see how twisted the scoliosis is. And there's a rod in there treating her lower back. But we did this just for the neck, right? After three months, she disappeared from the office. Three months later, she comes back. No more headaches, no more neck pain. Look at the x-ray in the far right. Not only does she have a, her maintain her curve, her head posture improved quite a bit. This is a plus seven year old individual. So you're not gonna to expect to see the head corrections you would see in someone under the age of 40. Excellent correction. Next. Uh, this is a surgical case. And then after this one, I think we can move to uh, some of the application slides. Notice that um, on the top two, uh, if you look at the uh, film on the left, where the two uh, plates are in the lower cervical vertebra, a little lower dug, Right there, right there. Now notice the top one is forward of the bottom one, not supposed to be that way. And the head is forward of the shoulders. This person had neck pain, shoulder pain. On the right, you see the collar on them, but those two plates are perfectly lined up. Surgeons should pay close attention to this because a lot of your patients where you've done a fine surgery are complaining of neck pain and shoulder stiffness and headaches. And they're starting to look at you and blame you for the surgery. Uh, the truth is their forward head posture is unstable. And as soon as you put the collar on, that restabilizes them. This patient was out of, stiff, out of pain with the stiffness and headaches within 15 minutes after the collar was put on. This was sent to me. This was not our patient. It was a, another chiropractor who had treated this individual. The bottom two films is, is one of our patients. This is a surgeon who had surgery on his own neck. Again, headaches and shoulder pain. And uh, you see the, uh, the front of the neck where the, uh, the uh, hardware is uh, drilled into the vertebra to stabilize the uh, damaged joint. And on the right, if you'll notice, um, his head is back further and he's got a slight curve to his neck. All of his symptoms are gone. He has a collar and uses it three to four times a week, even today. Okay, let's skip to the application side, please. Okay. Uh, Right there. Yeah, yeah, here's a good. Now here's a person severe. Look at upper left hand corner. Severe forward head posture. This is what we do for our patients when they come in. We take those of you who don't have X-ray machines and those who do. We now do all of it. We take this picture. We have the camera out. We take our our smartphone out. We take a picture. We capture for the patient if they have a smartphone. We take a picture on their phone so they can remember what they look like. And then we put the collar on them and we take another picture like you see on the right where they can see the visual change. So we do that with the, not only with the smartphone, but we do it with the x-ray machine. Uh, we take the first x-ray where the person's standing like you see him on the left. 
And then we take another x-ray with the collar on them, showing how the head and the neck curves improve uh, and they shoot via the x-ray. So they take that second x-ray with the collar on. We call that the correction potential x-ray. It shows us the potential correction we can make with the server guard forward head posture correction collar. Okay, next one. Dr. Delano, let me just uh, interject just to explain. <clears throat> Um, Dr. Delano keeps an inventory of collars in his office, and you can see this patient has, you know, a protective uh, tissue on it. So you can easily sanitize and keep these things clean as you move between patients. So there's a stable of products in his office to use for that in-office therapy. Uh, thank you, Doug. That's a good point. And I might add to that in that um, we have uh, four collars going all day long in our clinic. After they receive the treatment, whether you're giving them physical therapeutic treatment or uh, chiropractic treatment or medical treatment, we have an orthopedic surgeon who has them go into their attached physical therapy uh, unit and the patients receive the treatment after the uh, whatever treatment protocols were done that day. For a physical therapist, it might be stretching the neck to get some mobility, and then you put them on the collar here for 15 minutes and let that uh, uh, correction sit in there. 15 to 20 minutes is the minimum time you should do this. You can adjust the track according to patient comfort. Some people are older than others. Some have more degenerative joint disease in their neck than others. So the older patients, such as this gentleman, you don't want to go all the way back on the track. So if you look at the, uh, the picture on the right, you notice that we went maybe two thirds back on the track. Didn't go all the way back because this man is older, he has herniated discs in his neck, and you can only, you have to go to patient tolerance. You do want to set it where it's, where it's uh, aggressive, but not to the point where it causes the pain, any, any pain or discomfort to the patient. So you have the ability to do this gradually over time. There's no rush. So if you're a physical therapist or a chiropractor, you're seeing a patient three to four times per week, you should finish your treatment protocol with the collar for 15 to 20 minutes. Not only will this increase your, uh, your success rate with the outcome of that patient, they will appreciate how good they feel and they'll follow their program of care more accurately. We'll talk about more, more about that a little later on when we discuss the business aspect of this. Next. And here's a person with a very hyperkyphosis in the back of her spine, the thoracic area. So in order her, to get her to sit up straight, she was so bad, we put a little a pool noodle in the back there so she pivots her back over that so that we can get the collar to move her head or ears over her shoulders. Some folks are so slumped forward, you almost have to work on a thoracic area as well. Next, here's two patients, uh, a mother and daughter. Uh, the mother is in her 70s. You notice we only went halfway up the track there. And the daughter in her, in her 30s, or early 40s, she, she was able to go almost all the way back on the track. So... How far you go back depends on the age and the condition of the spine of the patient. Use good judgment, and there's no rush. You can do this gradually and incrementally over time. This is what makes this functional correction brace better than anything. It's the only one of its kind, actually. There's no other neck braces that gradually and incrementally remodel the head neck uh, complex uh, while it improves the cervical lordosis. Next. We can skip this post. Oh, let's go for a few seconds. Here's the collar top-down view. You see the behind her where the arrow is. There's a fulcrum pad. Now that is operated by a screw on the outside of the collar, where the where the practitioner, the therapist, the chiropractor, or orthopedist can decide to add more fulcrum support to the neck. If you have X-rays, this is a beautiful uh, uh, addition to the collar because you can look uh, on the X-ray how much correction in a, a neck lordosis you want to achieve. If you don't have x-rays, you can't do that. You can only estimate it. But with x-rays, you can go measure by the millimeter how much correction you want to put in there to get the lower doses back. Very, very important technology. Next. That's more um, of fulcrum. So let's get yeah. over. Why don't we switch to the uh, report of findings PowerPoint? Okay, so... Um, how do, we, how do we get such success with our patients using this? So I'm going to go through this as though you were a patient in our clinic and we were explaining to you how everything works. So if you look at this report of findings, um, we, I talk about on the side here is the verbal stuff we cover, but the patient's already been examined. They stood up. We took the uh, smartphone picture of their posture. They have that. 
Then we took the x-ray of their posture, and that's the one you see on the, on the left here. Notice her head is way forward, and look how straight her neck is. Yeah, very straight, and look at the normal curve line. She's way off there, and the head posture, the line in the back, is very, very narrow. Now, the x-ray on the right, taken a few minutes later, you see the head back, way back over the shoulders, and you see a beautiful curve in their neck. In fact, that's almost an ideal curve. So once the patient sees this, now they're actually wearing this collar while I'm going over the report of findings. Why do I do that? Well, we do it for two reasons. First of all, we had to put it on to take the second x-ray. And if you're a physical therapist and you don't have access to x-rays, you can take that second picture with your smartphone with them wearing the collar so they can see the delta in their posture, the delta improvement. Uh, so either way you go, x-ray is obviously very powerful. The picture of them wearing the collar is also powerful, as you'll see in the bottom film. So if you look at the bottom film, in our office, we have the patient standing there with the collar on. We took a picture of her with her smartphone so she could see it. We also have her x-rays in the background. You can see what she looked like on the left, and then you can look and see what she looks like on the right. This person was sent to us from Kessler Institute of Rehabilitation because they couldn't get her out of neck pain. This woman was out of neck pain in three days. And, and this is without chiropractic care. She gets no chiropractic care. Next. Okay, so then we asked the patient to look at a chart like this, a posture chart. We asked them to circle where they think they are. So, you know, we've already explained to them that the, the forward head posture uh, causes their neck to straighten. It pinches the vertebral artery, affecting their circulation. It causes a potential disc herniation and traps the nerve. So you've got that trifecta going against them and it's causing the headaches, neck pain, arm pain that they have. I, I target whatever, and these are repeat symptoms, by the way. We hear the same thing over, now they may vary a few different here and there, but most people have a combination of headache, neck stiffness, neck pain, shoulder pain, or radiculopathies into the hands and fingertips, numbness, tingling, et cetera, all right? And then we ask them to circle the one they think they are, where they are, where they are at on this progression chart. So they already have the x-ray in front of them. They're looking at that. They circle it. I confirm it with them. And then I give it to them to take home. So that's where they are now. We're going to do this process again in six weeks when we look at the rehabilitated and corrected posture as a result of using the server guard in conjunction with the therapies that the therapist and chiropractor have employed over the, over the prior six weeks. Now, we recommend a three to four times a week treatment schedule for both physical therapists and chiropractors. Um, but this does, that's not a hard and fast rule. You can go longer. That said, understand that the daily usage of it gets a, a more efficient correction. So let's say if you did it three to four times a week with your therapy, you'll get about 70% of the correction that you would normally get if you had them doing it at home every day and they were coming into your office uh, for just the treatment. Uh, alone. So either way you go, we like to get it in our patient's hand as quickly as possible uh, because we have enough to do to fix not only the rest of the neck, but also the rest of their spines, lower back issues, et cetera, knees, shoulders. Okay. So we, we do want to put some kind of a chart. You don't have to use this one. There's a number of them off the internet and Doug can certainly uh, provide them for you with his group, but you want us to have the patient circle it. Now, you know, they completely understand this. Next. So we tell them about the three curves of the spine. Now, this is a little bit of a technical, the next two slides, but we want you to know that we didn't just make this up. You need to have the three spinal curves. The algebraic former, a formula is on the top, top of that chart. R, resistance to the forces of gravity, equals N, which is the number of curves squared plus one. If you have three curves, if you look at the far right, three curves, far right, you got right. the neck curve, the mid-back curve, and then the lower back. All right, the top and lower one are in black, the middle one's in, in the light color. If you plug that into the formula, three curves squared plus one is 10. What if you don't have a neck curve, like most people don't who have forward head posture? Then you only have two curves. And you plug that back into formula, the number of curves squared, two squared is four plus one is five. So just by losing the neck curve, you've lost half of your spine's ability to absorb shock. Next curve, next slide. This explains what the Dalmas index that the prior charts are all about, and it gives the source that you can go to to see it for yourself. Next slide. 
So here's another nice poster we like to use in our office. This is taken off our wall. And you'll notice all the symptoms on the right. It tells them common causes, you know, TMJ problems. If there's dentists were doing this, uh, I'm sorry I didn't mention it. TMJ is a big problem with forward head posture. So just getting the head back over the shoulders with this device will correct the TMJ. And remember, the push zone is on the cheek pads, the zygomatic bone up below the orbit of, a, of the eye, but above the teeth. So you're not putting any pressure on the TMJ joint but you are getting the head back over the shoulders, all right? And on the left there, you'll notice that there's a picture of a, a uh, it's an illustration of a person's in forward head posture. Now there's products on the market out there that you can rent, that they charge you like 10 cents a viewing. And you take a picture of someone's po posture with your smartphone and you put the dots that you see right there and it gives you a computer analytic uh, appraisal uh, of how far forward all their structures are. It's the, it's the next best thing, thing to an x-ray, but it's not as good as the x-ray. That said, you can just use the actual picture of the person, which really motivates them because they're seeing themselves in their no, neutral posture, and then they're seeing themselves in the, in the server guard forward head posture correction collar with their head corrected. Very powerful effect on the person's motivation to follow through on the schedule that you've outlined for them. Next. Okay, so after we complete, we completely clearly explain the symptoms to the patient caused by the forward head posture and the spinal subluxations, uh, the patient really has got it by this time. They are totally committed to whatever you outline for them as their program of care. The ServeGuard collar is put on all of our patients in the clinic after each adjustment uh, for the in-office therapy session. So we treat them. If you're a chiropractor, give them their spinal adjustment and then sit them in the chair like you see in the lower right-hand corner for that 20-minute period with the collar on. If you're a physical therapist, you do your neck stretching, uh, your treatment, your protocols for the neck, whatever you do, stick with it. And when you're done with that, you then put him in the collar or let him sit uh, in the chair for 15 to 20 minutes. Now, we build neuromuscular re-education. It is fair to build that. That is exactly what's happening. I think the code is, uh, I think I gave the wrong code to you, Doug. Uh, Please check out your code for that. But neuromuscular re-education, I think that reimburses Medicare about $35. And on regular insurance, uh, standard uh, insurance, it's, it's somewhere in a 60, 70 range. So uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, per visit uh, billings you can make from doing this wonderful thing for, pa for patients. Next. Uh, let's go. This is a practice uh, business model. So let's talk about um, some of these things. The patient is now shown, has been shown that the spinal alignment is responsible for their suffering. Their forward head posture, FHP, is the big part of this problem. The x-rays tell the tale of where they are now and where they need to get to to get well. Uh, and I might substitute the word x-ray for the uh, smartphone pictures of their posture or computer algorithm that you may want to use, whatever you're, you elect to do. The server guard forward head posture collar is needed as part of the adjustments and remodeling of the head neck complex. Without it, you will not be able to efficiently do this. I don't care what technique that you use. The insure, this ensures that they will see the progress and actually feel it, and they'll stay compliant with your program of care. Most people enjoy how they feel, how they feel after they wear the collar for that 15 to 20 minutes post adjustment. This reduces your patient dropouts. And if you forget to put the collar on them, many patients will remind you. That's how good they feel. The post x-ray date is about six weeks later. So you get, uh, there's another service you're gonna provide additional x-rays. The patients are looking forward to it because they wanna see how much forward head posture has been corrected. And there's nearly universal correction and improvement of forward head posture. The cervical lordosis is improved at a great percentage of patients, but there are limiting factors like severe degenerative joint disease, herniations, uh, spurring, large spurs, there are, there are limitations in the bone structures that sometimes prevent the full return of the neck lordosis. We see more neck lordosis return in the patients under 40 years of age, obviously because they're younger and they have less degenerative joints. The result is a great doctor-patient team with a high level of confidence in the future of their health. What do I mean by that? Well, the patient now knows that their doctor can do a treatment to make them feel better and that their doctor will adjust their collar over time to get even more corrections 
uh, in their head posture and neck lordosis. Very similar to a dentist putting braces on teeth. With incremental adjustments over time, you get to the maximum correction of the bony structures that the orthodontist is trying to achieve. Next slide, please. Okay, um, how will the Servigard collar help my practice grow? Well, one of the questions is, um, will this collar, um, how will it affect my practice? Uh, will it result in less office visits? I, I, think, I think I've already answered that. It does not result in less office visits. It in fact, results in your, the program of care that you've actually outlined is followed. It results in less dropouts. Now, every, every doctor is concerned about patients who do not complete their program of care. Why does that happen? Well, maybe you didn't get enough results in the first two weeks. It happens to all of us. So you wanna put your, your best approach forward so that the patient realizes after two weeks, wow, I'm, I'm getting better. So the doctor is correct and I'm gonna follow through the program of care. And they're also very, very tuned in to seeing the post-examination at that six, eight week period down the road. So your program of care is gonna be adhered to. This avoids premature dropouts and this is one of the most costly things to your, your practice income, people not completing their care. And if they drop out early, they're not gonna be referring anybody to your office. So you have a negative impact uh, on your, your ultimate practice growth. So uh, the, co the collar itself, uh, I like to think of it as the smallest part of the profit. It's about $200 uh, uh, for, the for the doctor uh, when they sell the collar for 380 to $400 or more uh, to the patients. Uh, the buildings for neuromuscular education, again, I don't think that 07112 is correct. Please check it out to make sure. Okay. The additional x-rays and console fees are another several hundred dollars on top of uh, what's initially been spent. And many patients will need to use a server guard along with their lifetime, we say chiropractic care, but also follow-up care. If you've had neck patients in the past, you know they come back in the future. So this will give them a good connection to you and as a therapist, you may need to adjust that fulcrum in the back of the collar to improve the lordosis correction of these people over time. So we have you know, hundreds of patients that come back every month to two months uh, for a look-see on their collar to see if we want to adjust it anymore uh, for a refresher treatment, whether you're a physical therapist or a chiropractor, that would be true. Um, the other thing is the, the referrals that come from the, uh, the unique factor. I mean, nobody else has this in your area. Um, at least for now, that may not be the case much longer, but at least for now, that's the case. And the patients talk about it. Um, just the other day, the case, the first case I showed you today on the uh, uh, report of findings, that, that person was in last week. Uh, and today's date is uh, June the 24th or 5th. Uh, she was in just a few days ago and uh, the mother was, witnessed it. And she then made an appointment because she was having neck problems uh, 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 as well. And she came in for her daughter's problems who had migraines every day, but now she has neck issues and neck problems. And she's coming as a patient as well. And this is, happens typically. And then they wind up buying their own collar. Insurance does pay for this. It's Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, it's a DME device. It's FDA approved. Uh, Medicare has a billing code for it if you have Medicare in your facility. So there is help with the insurance companies, but it hasn't stopped our, our patients. Those who don't have insurance coverage wind up buying it anyway. They either go on payment plans or they buy it wholesale right out uh, because after they see it work on them for several weeks, they don't want to be without one. Okay, so um, I think, Doug, we can, uh, I think we're, are we done at this point? Yeah. Let's, let's open <clears throat> up for some questions. Right. I think that was great. Thank you, Dr. Milano. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, I'll say one thing on the referrals. Uh, you know, the, the uniqueness of the collar is certainly a big part of it. But from what my my observation of your practice and others, it's really basically just satisfaction. They're so happy that they've gotten a result. It's kind of a cool thing to show people and talk about. So um, just just doing it, as Dr. Delano pointed out, definitely, you know, helps drive those uh, those referrals, uh, mostly based on just satisfaction. So we did have some questions. I appreciate uh, the, the group submitting some stuff. And, and really one, one of them actually is, we really didn't hit that well, which is, you know, just to kind of explain, because I can tell by the question, I should frame it. So Dr. Delano will have his, some of every patient use the collar after therapy, 
but at the same time, and I think it's this previous slide. Uh, yeah, in fact, I don't have that in there, but it's, you know, it's, it's uh, using the practice, but you're explaining that you're going to get better results at home using it uh, every day plus the long-term use. So somewhere in the, in the process, the patient, many patients are buying it for home use. So the question is how many, so you have some patients buying it for home use, what, what percentage do you think uh, uh, do that? All right, so let me say it this way. Over the last several months, we started taking the multiple pictures, the smartphone phone picture of the posture, before we put the collar on and after, so they can see the difference in their posture. Um, we've always explained to them what forward head posture was, but we've moved to the level where now we explain to them what it looks like on them. They see it for themselves, they internalize it. While we go over those reported findings, uh, we have them wearing the server guard collar and they're actually feeling their head being pushed back over the shoulders. So when they take it off 15 minutes later, they not only have uh, the intellectual understanding of what's wrong, um, the understanding of that their symptoms are connected to it, but they actually can feel the difference. It's already working and they haven't even begun their treatment yet. So they are all in on this. So I would say we've had 18 collars sold this last month. That's the highest we've ever done. It's getting higher because now almost everybody uh, wants a collar. And why do you say everybody? Does everybody have forward head posture? You know, pretty much. Uh, we had uh, we had my uh, my daughter uh, watch the graduation from high school uh, the other day uh, at her her community, and she was shocked at how old as the kids walked up they all had forward head posture. You know this is something any of you viewing this webinar you can see it for yourself. Just look at everybody; they're all walking with their head forward. Our population has morphed, so the need is out there for almost all folks, especially if you're chronically. On your web, your uh, on the web, looking at an, a laptop, an iPhone, an iPad, um, these postures are causing the head to go forward of your shoulders. So uh, I would say that at this point, Doug, to answer your question, I would say more than half of the patients in our practice are getting the collar, and I think it's just going to grow from here. It's mm -hmm. the it's the new thing that they're all anchored to that constantly reminds them of the need for their treatment and the need to be responsible for the correction of their posture, which if they don't will result in the, the symptoms that brought them to the practice. Right, right. So also it's kind of a question um, or more of an observation, you know, uh, from one of our uh, physical therapists that's attending just saying, you know, it seems like it would help, actually as somebody that owns a physical therapy practice, so would help my therapists develop more confidence in treatment. Uh, in terms of outcomes. Yeah, I was at a Kessler uh, meeting and Dr. Malanga was there. And uh, Dr. Malanga is a physiatrist who is uh, uh, on our research team, um, both with uh, Kessler and with uh, Walter Reed Military Hospital. And he clearly stated that there is not an effective uh, treatment protocol in the physical therapy world to address neck pain. Um, they, there's treatments, there's shots, there's medications, there's opioids, there's uh, you know, ultrasound, there's things that help relax muscles, but these things are, are none of them have been proven to be long lasting. And um, uh, they are, there's a great need for something to rehabilitate the neck curve. So to, to, to have a technique like this available, you're gonna have the confidence to know that when that patient comes in and you treated them for the knee or for the elbow or the lower back, and, Almost everybody has neck pain. If you ask them, they'll tell you they do. Um, they may have had knee surgery the week before, but when you start talking to them on the uh, consultation, they're going to tell you about their neck problems, neck stiffness, especially if you just ask them. And if you're giving them all sweat free charts where they can ch check off where their pain levels are, it'll come out that way. So you'll wind up treating these people uh, in addition to whatever else they're coming in there for. And you're going to feel comfortable and confident about the outcome because they're all gonna start feeling better as they repeat use of this thing. So um, the answer to your question is the certainty and the confidence on the practitioners in, whether it be a physical therapist and especially a chiropractor who are, who are designing their treatment plans to build curves and uh, realign the head over the shoulders, uh, the results are gonna be remarkable and the uh, feedback's gonna be uh, excellent. So the confident factor on the doctor's part 
and the confidence factor on the patient's part in the doctor is going to be off the charts. Great. Okay. That's a very helpful answer. Thank you. Uh, the other uh, question here is, you know, are you, uh, could you speak to any contraindications? And then the second part is, have you seen any ill effects in any of your patients? Yes, contraindications. Um, we have to do this uh, if they have cancer, if there's an infection in the bone. Uh, some people have such large herniated discs with neuropathies that if you uh, put pressure on the neck in any shape, shape or form, uh, it's not able to move, it'll elicit pain. So the generalized statement is if you put the collar on people and it causes a, a, a great deal of pain, a sharp increase in pain, there's something going on in that neck and you have to stop immediately, refer them out for more examination, uh, x-ray, MRI, et cetera. Right. Yeah. And, and I just uh, want to add to that, you know, in terms of pain, that's always the indication. There's never, we always tell um, our coaches, our neck pain coaches and our, our uh, patients that you never want to experience pain. It's, it's going to feel a little, maybe I wouldn't even say discomfort little. It's not like not wearing the collar, but the whole answer is like, if you're feeling any pain, just back off a little bit, give it time. Well, I, I, let me clarify that. They're already in pain. And yeah. you're going to be putting a, pot, a collar on them and gradually improving the alignment of the posture, which's going to get rid of the pain. But if you start to adjust the posture uh, on that head and they say, I'm getting sharp pain in my neck, that is the pain I'm talking about. Okay. And okay. any okay. exacerbation of the pain in a very dramatic way, you've got to stop using it. And mm -hmm. uh, common sense says that you don't plow through pain. You, that's why you have different positions on the track to adjust that. Now, one more thing I'll say with regard to the pain, the cheek pads in the front, if you have severe forward head posture, the cheek pads, as they push the head backward, the first week or so they use it, they feel a lot of discomfort in there because it's pushing the head back over the shoulders. So make sure you tell the patient that this is normal. We don't want them to think that a new problem started. So, mm -hmm. oh, doctor, as, you, as I adjust the collar back over my head, my, my cheek pads are starting to feel more pressure. It's, it's uncomfortable. The answer to that is it's normal. Um, we're pushing the head over the shoulders. And as the head and neck remodel, as the head incrementally improves, that pressure on the cheek pads gets less and less and less. And that'll be a good sign to the user that their head posture is now corrected. Great. Okay, well, we've kind of hit the end of our, uh, our 45 minutes and uh, that, that was the uh, last of the questions. If, of course, we're always available to answer any further questions you have. So you'll have uh, my contact info and please feel free to reach out. But thank you, Dr. Delano. That was very, uh, very enlightening. It's great to see the results on your practice Thanks. and the growth Thanks. you're experiencing through using the collar. Thanks for the opportunity to tell the folks about this. Have a nice right. day. Thanks. Have a good day. Thank you.